Hey everyone, I'm Northern Explorer. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be utilizing the upfitter switches on my 2017 F250 to create a convenient plug-in for my air compressor. This is part two in the series. In the first video, I made a replacement for this air hose. So check that video out too if you have time. Components of the build include 10 feet of 8 gauge wire, marine grade, which I will cut to size, three 50 amp Anderson connectors, a dust cover with lanyard, a pull handle for the Anderson connector, a wire terminal, heat shrink, wire conduit, a splicer kit for 8 gauge wire, and zip ties. Necessary tools for the job, solder, torch, plenty of butane, 5 16 socket, wire cutter, small flathead screwdriver, a tool to strip 8 gauge wire, which I don't have, so I'm going to wing it with a razor blade, and my trusty vise. So the whole idea here is that I'm not going to have to pop the hood and connect these to the batteries anymore. I'm going to be able to just plug in to an external plug on my vehicle and power up with the upfitter switch. So the first part of the project I'm going to tackle is connecting my Anderson plug to the 8 gauge wire. This is going to be the plug that's fitted permanently onto my truck and this is the wire that's going to be fed into the upfitter switch loom under the hood of the truck. I prefer soldering over crimping whenever possible. I'm sure both are effective. Uh, the main reason I'm doing soldering in this case is my crimper only goes up to 10 gauge wire anyways. So I'm gonna show you how I do the soldering. You gotta strip the wire back the appropriate amount, measure it, and then with a razor blade or a proper tool, just cut off what you need. Being careful not to cut any of the individual strands. Just like that. In the next step, you get to play with fire. Place the Anderson terminal lightly in your vise. Be careful not to flatten it out. and start melting some solder. Note to self, don't completely fill it up with solder because you're gonna have overflow and I'm gonna have to clean off that connector a little bit. Oh, yeah. First one I've done in a while. All right, I got the end all cleaned up. So the next thing I like to do is, this probably isn't 100% necessary with Anderson plugs, but I always like to put shrink wrap on. It just kind of gives it a, a nice finished look. And I'll be using my heat gun for that, not the blowtorch. And then repeat the same process for the negative. Cut the appropriate amount of insulation off of the end. Now to actually connect the wire to the Anderson plug, there's a square end and a round end. The square end is where the other Anderson plug connects to. So you wanna come in from this side with the wire. Pay attention to what's positive and what's negative. This one's negative. So you got the humped end of the connector. And if you look carefully on here, there's a humped end of the wire terminal. So they're aligned like that, both humped ends up. And you just put it in. The next step will be to determine where I'm going to put the plug and I think I'm going to put it right here 
behind where the license plate would normally be in Michigan. You don't need a license plate. For those that don't know, the upfitter switches relay box is right here on the driver's side. And the wiring loom is right down here. So I need to pull out the correct wire. Uh, I know I'm gonna be using uh, switch number six. six. Switch number six and switch number five are 40 amp. So it's pretty easy to figure out which is which because they're the two thicker wires. And switch number six is actually the one that this is attached to, which is the gray and orange wire. So I need to pull that out. So I didn't actually have to cut too much off of my wire. This started off as a 10 foot section. I left enough room that I could put an extra loop in the wire just in case I ever want to move the plug to a different location if I get a different aftermarket bumper or something. So on the opposite end of the plug, I'm going to put a ground lug and I'm going to use the splicer kit to connect it to my upfitter switches. Now this says right on it that it's supposed to be for single strand wire. This is multiple strand wire, so I'm just going to tin the end and that should fix that problem. Oh, that one turned out perfect. No dripping. All right, now the shrink wrap. Now the other end, I'm using the splicer kit. This says that it's for 14 gauge through eight gauge, and this is eight gauge wires. So it's got little screws in here. So my question is, is there a stopper halfway? Oops, oh, don't lose that. Okay. Whew, that is a tiny screw. Doesn't look like there's a stopper. So I got that measured pretty good though. All right, so all I need to do now is tin the end of this and that'll essentially make it a single strand wire and then that splicer kit should work. We'll find out. Now, what was the one thing I said I didn't want to lose? Two hours later. Found it. All right, I just need to go hook this up to the upfitter switch wire. Now I just need to feed the wire through and get it zip tied into its final location. So the location I picked for the Anderson plug sits right here behind what would normally be the license plate holder. In Michigan, you don't need to have a front license plate. So I took that off and what you're left with is a little cubby hole. So I got everything hooked up for its very first trial run. There's the T connector. Air compressor hooked up. Plugged into the plug, which is connected to my 40 amp upfitter switch. Let's head inside. So you always wanna have your vehicle running when you're running an air compressor. There's a lot of amps. You don't wanna drain your battery. So here's the genius of this setup. Let me start up my truck. All right, so ready to go. As you can see, it's 37 degrees outside. I'm just gonna switch my dash display so that it shows tire pressure. Right there, driver assist. Tire pressure, 
All right, so I deflated my tires a little bit in the back. So now all I have to do is turn on my 40 amp number six upfitter switch. Right here. And the air compressor is going. I can hear it running. So we're just gonna watch this for a second. And hopefully that pressure will start coming up. And there we go. Look at that. They evened out, so they're both airing up evenly. And then when it gets to the proper tire pressure, which is 65 in the back, I'm gonna shut it off from inside my vehicle. So I guess we'll find out how long this takes. So I'm out of the rain, I'm out of the snow, I'm out of the freezing cold, I can sit in here with the heat on, I can monitor the pressure right from the tire pressure monitoring system in my truck. And when it hits the pressure that I want, I can just flick the switch. So in theory, these should be airing up exactly the same pressure. Um, I'm gonna guess that there's a slight difference in the way that tire pressure monitors is reading each tire because they are connected together. I'm just gonna get that up to 65-ish. Let's just shut that off for a second. There we go, 65, 66, perfect. That only took a few minutes. Like I said, I'm nice and warm in my truck. Let's go detach everything. That's it for this one. Like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time.